you're on social media, you're trying to put out content or posts that are get people more engaged to actually wanna reach out and hire you. In this video, we're gonna talk about the foundational breakdown of a post and how it can get you more clients. Stay tuned. So when I was on for when I was on social media at first, it was literally just throwing shit up against the wall. It was like, okay, let's try this. Ah, oh, it didn't stick very well. I was like, oh, maybe I have to do it harder. Whoa. Okay, and it would stick for a little bit, but then it would fall down. I just wasn't getting a lot of traction with my posts, wondering why people weren't really reaching out to me. So I was just putting it out there. Okay. And I did get clients, however, when I actually learned how to post correctly and give the right content and doing it in a loving and a caring way that was just merely giving, that's when I had more people coming my way. That's when we've created more clients. Okay, and the same thing with other people. There's three different levels, okay? The lowest level is they're just not posting anything, okay? <laughs> no one's going to all of a sudden reach out to you and then all of a sudden say, I wanna hire you without seeing any of your content, okay? So the first step is you just gotta start posting. Okay, the second step is posting, but you're not really being strategic when you do it. You're just kind of throwing up stuff. And, you know, I think a lot of us are still trying to figure out exactly what's the right formula. And the truth is, there's not a true formula that every coach in the world uses. Okay, everyone has a different formula. And we'll talk about what that formula is here today because it's helped tons of individuals. However, everyone has a different voice. Everyone has a different personality. Everyone has a different tribe. So the specifics on what to do is always going to vary. However, we're going to talk about the foundational post on what to share on social media. So when we're first posting, before we even get started, we got to think, we got to reverse engineer it. What do we want people to believe after reading our post or watching our video? What do we want them to do? Okay, what new behavior, what new action? Okay, and then what's the result that we want the person to have or what's possible of them having of believing and doing that? Okay, and then before I even get started, now I want to go, okay, what's going inside of their head right now? And essentially, what do they believe right now? What do they do right now? And what do they have right now that's negative? Okay, and so when I begin in that mindset, okay, and actually writing it down, I can see, oh, okay, this makes sense, right? Because no one's gonna listen on what you need to do, okay, if they don't first know what you believe or what that person believes. <laughs> Okay, so we we got it down. Okay, we got the negative B do have down the neg or and the positive B do have of what they want them to believe. Now we can jump in our content. So the first thing that we have to do, okay, which you notice a lot about my videos, is where we start with a hook. Okay, a hook is essentially what's going to hook them in. What's going to get them like stuck, wanting to actually listen to our videos and following through all the way through them. Okay, and so what happens? is when we don't get a hook or it's not a powerful hook, we feel like we have to hurry and reel them in. And what I mean reel them in is we have to hurry and tell them the answer or give them the information that we promised, okay? However, if we don't build up into the answer, people really just don't take away what they really should, all right? And people who've been in this industry know that. Like, yeah, the hook is one of the most powerful things, okay? This is almost like your headline. Okay, and when the headline is powerful, when the hook is powerful, they're going to be much more likely to listen to the rest of your content. Okay, so we got a good hook. We got a good headline. And so some tips with the hook or headline is it has to be both, both motivational and inspirational. Okay, it has to be kind of a shock factor. It has to really jump out to them. Okay, and this could be something that's maybe not even true, but you know it's going to get their attention and by reading it, you're going to break through that perception. Okay, so you have to do whatever you can to try to hook them, okay, to get them to read your content because if you don't have a powerful hook and you don't have a powerful headline and you're like, I'm just going to tell them the information, it's not going to work. 
it's just not. Okay. And that was my mistake that I did for years. I was like, I'm just going to tell them the answer. I'm just going to tell them what they actually need to do as far as the workouts. I'm going to tell them exactly what they, uh, yeah, what they need to do for their nutrition. And I know that when I'm telling them what to do, they'll want more and they'll reach out to me, but they never really take it in. They never really consume it. And it really doesn't change human behavior. And if you look at human beings, we're emotional creatures. We feel, we make decisions through our feelings. Okay. Like they say at the stock market, the stock market is based upon pure emotion. Okay, and they say this all the time. When people are feeling good, the stock market goes up. When people are feeling bad, the stock market goes down. We're just a bunch of feelers, right? And so we got to understand that we're not logical. Okay, we're going to make a logical decision after we've had an emotional feeling. Okay, so we got to realize that in order to really get to that information and that data to really get people to understand this, we have to first hook them and get them stuck on what we're reading. Okay, is this making sense? All right. Now, once we got a good hook, now once we got a good headline, okay, now we could go down into the rest of it. So now we're going to talk about a negative part of our story. What? Why a negative part? Here's what the negative part of our story does is it connects. Okay, so going back to what I've said before, people don't care what you know until they know that you've cared, until they know that you've felt that, till you've that you've experienced that, that you've thought that. So when we go into our negative part of our story, essentially what we're saying is, here's what I've experienced. Here's what I've done that didn't work. You know, when I first got into real estate, I thought real estate was this. I thought women just wanted a nice body. And I thought the reason why I'm not getting girls is because I don't have a nice body. But then, okay, so now if we go through the negative part of the story, now we go and we transition into the positive part. And when I finally realized that women don't really give a shit about a body, they care about having a man, they care about a guy who's confident in his own skin, is when I really started to feel more confident when I was approaching girls. When I finally realized that I was placing all of my value and who I was into external things, money, my body, Okay, what I was doing for work. And so when I fart started to see, I said fart when I started the fart. Okay. When I started to really look at who is who is me, who is Travis Brady. And when I really started to see the value inside of me, okay, that's what really increased my confidence and what allowed me to approach girls. Okay. So that's just a scenario, right? Which is a true story. Okay, I really struggled. Um, approaching girls. And so I really had to work on myself on the inside. So when we share that journey, okay, what this does is it starts to connect with people and then now they're open, okay, now they're open to receive, okay, what they can create. Okay, but if you just go into it and here's how most people do it is like, Guys, girls don't give a shit about the money. What the hell do you think you're doing? It's about who you are as an individual. And so when we're sharing this part of it, we're coming off kind of judgy. We're coming off kind of like, I'm better than you and you're stupid. Okay, so make sure you really connect with that person. And to connect with that person, it has to, it always comes back down to you. You have to have had to work through all your things. You've had to work through all your problems. So if there's any shame, if there's any judgment through this part, Okay, um, your your ideal client, they're going to feel that and it's just going to push them away. Okay, so you can't judge okay, or shame this part of it. You have to accept because if you want them to accept what they can create, you have to accept what you've done wrong okay, and what they've done wrong okay, and show uh, remorse, show um, love through that. Okay, now we got the hook. Okay, we talked about the crappy part of our story. I shouldn't say the crappy part, essentially what we've been through and what we've learned, okay? And then now after we show them what we create, now we can go back to the data, okay? And the goal is to stick to one major point, okay? One point, just one, okay? Sometimes we can go two, so we would essentially repeat this process and go two, but we just want one main point, Okay, now once we make that one point, now we're saying, hey, if you want more, 
go here. Okay, and what I mean by here is now you're going to send them to your website to maybe get a free online training. Maybe it's a strategy session. Okay, maybe you're suggesting, hey, go check out my Instagram video that I just did. Whatever it might be, okay, you got to send them somewhere else. And so this is what gets people addicted to your content, right? Is you keep helping them, okay? And so they keep following you and then you end it with a call to action. Okay, and I would say two out of 10 times you're actually making an offer. Okay, two out of 10 times. That's just a rough guesstimate. Okay, some people use more, sometimes will be less, but you want to give more than you're asking to receive. Because if you're just throwing out offers all the time, okay, and just trying to sell people, people see right through that, guys. And in this day and age, people are more sensitive about that than ever before. Okay, they don't like being sold, they wanna buy. Okay, they don't like being sold. So when you're constantly, and, and we can talk all about the offer, and we'll talk about that in my next video. Uh, see how I did that? Okay, is we'll talk about how do you put together a powerful offer where people would actually want to say yes to this. But if you're overdoing this, okay, and you don't, you're not doing it right, it's going to totally push people away from your content and they're not going to want to consume your content anymore, which means you're not influencing them, which means, okay, it's not going to come back around and create the income that you really want inside your business, right? So again, headline, okay, hook them hard, okay, be a good hooker, right? Negative part of the story, positive part, hit your data point, okay? What did you learn? Here's the thing, here's my breakthrough, right? Here's what I believed and here's what I did and here's what I created, okay? Now, here if you want more, okay? Now, for most call to action, so the other eight times, essentially you're saying, now go out and believe in yourself or go out and do this and, you know, whatever it might be. So it's just an inspirational ending, that challenges them to do something, okay? So that's what you do eight times. The other two times, you're actually going to make an offer, okay? And the offer is essentially something that leads closer to them working with you as a client, okay? Hope this is making sense for you guys. Check out the next video. Be inspired, be strong, and again, the world needs you.